right my hearing aid. <laughs> Good morning. Hello and welcome back. Hi, sis. Hi, sis. Hi, beautiful family. Feels again like we haven't seen you for ages, but mm -hmm. good to be back. Yes, it is. We're beginning a new review, review five. And there's an introduction to review five. So that's before we start on lesson 171. So let's, um, let's unpack that together, shall we? I'll go ahead and read from the COA version. I don't know how much in line this is with the FIP, but sis, I know you'll keep me on track. I will. <laughs> Thank you. What would I do without you? <laughs> ah, okay. We now review again. This time, we are ready to give more effort and more time to what we undertake. We recognize we are preparing for another phase of understanding. We would take this step completely that we may go on again more, soon, more sincere, with faith upheld more surely. Our footsteps have not been unwavering, and doubts have made us walk uncertainly and slowly on the road this course sets forth. Who said that? Who told him that? <laughs> you think he knows us? <laughs> well, you know, it just says, sorry. <laughs> I... He says, we recognize we are preparing for another phase of understanding. Oh, that went straight in then. And yeah. I was like, oh, my God, this is for me mm. right now. There's only now, right? right? The past doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And um, and then he says, we would take this step completely. Mm. Uh, that we go on again more certain, more certain, more yeah. sincere with faith upheld more surely. Is that what yours says? Yes. And then he, he calls us out as if he, you know, he's walking along with us. He says, our footsteps have not been unwavering <laughs> and doubts have made us walk uncertainly and slowly on the road this course sets forth. Do you think he's been eavesdropping? Yes, that's, that's what I think. <laughs> Who ratted me out? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We can't do anything in private anymore. I'm very, right? Seriously, my private life is gone. <laughs> like I never had one. Okay. Thank God. Yeah. But now we hasten on, for we approach a greater certainty, a firmer purpose, and a surer goal. And here's our prayer. So let's just join in this together, yeah. deeply in our heart. Let this be our undivided soul desire. We're ready. There's Deep nothing, breath. Yeah, nothing in the world that we want. We're ready to see the truth. Yeah. Steady our feet, our Father. Let our doubts be quiet and our holy minds be still and speak to us. We have no words to give to you. We would but listen to your word and make it ours. Lead our practicing as does a father lead a little child along a way he does not understand. Yet does he follow, sure that he is safe because his father leads the way for him. So do we bring our practicing to you. And if we stumble, you will raise us up. If we forget the way, we count upon your sure remembering. We wander off, but you will not forget to call us back. Quicken our footsteps now, that we may walk more certainly and quickly unto you. And we accept the word you offer us to unify our practicing as we review the thoughts that you have given us. love that feeling that we're children we're not certain about anything anymore we know what we have been doing was full of illusion fear and guilt and this is just leaning in this is resting in god placing our little hand in his knowing that the father love leads us and we can trust even if we and we don't have to be perfect that 
that that love will call us back if there's a shiny bauble that tends to tries to pull us off our way. Yeah, and it really does help me to remember that God wills my perfect happiness. Yeah, perfect happiness, mm -hmm. and and that comes from you know from being willing from my desire to know my incorruptible innocence, to really, really receive that. And it's from that that perfect happiness is sure. Just thank you for your vigilance and always calling us back to the felt state. Thank you. I can't get by without it. <laughs> no, but it's, a, it's so helpful and such a, a strong reminder about what what's really what transforms it's not just reading words and concepts but it is embodying that felt state and i'm feeling you know his love and that the gift is our perfect happiness we, we don't understand this kind of love and we, we're, we're going to get into that <sighs> this is the thought which should precede the thoughts that we review. Each one but clarifies some aspect of this thought or helps it be more meaningful, more personal and true and more descriptive of the holy self we share and now prepare to know again. Here we go. God is but love and therefore so am I. This self, capital S, holy self, this self alone knows love. This self alone is perfectly consistent in its thoughts, knows its creator, understands itself, is perfect in its knowledge and its love, and never changes from its constant state of union with its father and itself. Maybe this would be just a good time to, to touch upon it. Um, but mm -hmm. in the recognition that as mythical me takes up the course, when it reads the word love, it's going to go to thoughts and memories and a feeling state that it equates with love. And yet it is very clear that nothing here in the realm of illusion is true. The ego has its counterpart of the truth, but yet there's no truth in it at all. God alone is love with a capital L, and that's a divine love. And we, we are learning this love is changeless. It's universal. It's perfect. It doesn't wax and wane. It doesn't have degrees. It cannot abandon. It's like the sun. It shines forth on everything and everyone equally because love's nature is to extend itself. And so you can sort of contrast now in the world, our love is exclusive, not inclusive. We choose those in which we find are befitting of our love, but most of the world or a great deal of the world, we withhold our love from, right? through our judgments and our opinions and our desire to see differences. So this, the love of the ego, we actually come to discover that it's a hatred because its sole purpose is to divide and to separate. So ego doesn't know anything about real love. Mm -hmm. It's not made to love and it can't receive anything. It's, it's, so it can't, uh, it can't receive the love that it says it wants. That's right. It's terrified of it. Yes, that's exactly right. Thank you, sis. So the ego knows that if it were to encounter divine love, that would be its end. So it is terrified. So every time anybody in the world actually shows up, I don't know, like Jesus, offering a perfect love, you know, the ego hides or attacks it certainly won't open itself up to receiving. So that is why in two opposite thought systems, this world knows nothing about divine love or the love of God. In fact, 
It's so perfect that we can't fathom it. The mind that we think with mythical me has no clue about it. Yet, there is something called the holy relationship where both parties share a same goal. And in that unifying goal, Holy Spirit comes to make its home and abides. That is the memory of this divine love. That's where the relationship's goal is no fear, no guilt, but to honor and remember the innocence in our brother, their guiltlessness, to shine back from the light in our mind to theirs, to make that the temple or the foundation of the relationship. And therein is born a love not of this world. Beautiful. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic relationship. It can be with our children. It can be with our parents. It could be with our friends, whatever. Do you know, Jesus is speaking about two or more. Mm -hmm. It's not just about two. It could be two, but it could be three, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, two or more who share a truly common purpose. And that is that above all, they want to close the gap. That's right. I've seen that diagram before. I know. <laughs> yeah, but the love in this world is not love at all. It's two people wanting to love a body and love what's in the gap and to maintain that gap in the illusory self stories. And, and we call that love. And yet the end of that love is always certain death of the body. So it's this, I want to join you. I want through to with you to forgive everything that we thought we made independently from God. I want to show up authentically using seven key principles and allow the holy instant instant to occur where bodies cease, where hearts have joined, and the memory of thought of the Father of God is returned to our awareness. And um, you know this happens fleeting, holy instant, but the holy relationship it becomes a more sustained and prolonged. Until finally, this is we're, we're in our natural state all the time. Go ahead, sis. Thank you. Thank you for that. And what I've learned, and you've learned this too, well, we're still learning, right? Mm -hmm. um, is <laughs> that, you know, we set, when we, do, when we embark upon the course, we say we want to know that love with a capital L, right? We, we do. We say... Consciously, we say we want to know that love. We want to experience that love. Um, and, you know, we do want to know that the altar to God is within us. Yes. We want to know that consciously. Yeah. But what we found is that we can't know that the altar of God really really is within us until we desire to see it in our brother or sister that's right we can't keep it and, re and receive it until it's been extended yeah mm -hmm. yeah and then once you see it in your brother's face shining back on you so that mm -hmm. you receive and accept what you just extended um you know, if that's that contrast learning that you just can't accept the fraudulent substitute anymore. I mean, you might try, but it's going to be so empty now that you've seen and experienced the truth. And it's in our brother that it goes from a concept to, to knowing to a direct experience. And only when it's been your direct experience has it become yours so that all the naysayers on the face of the planet won't be able to change your mind because you know. You yeah. know what you saw and felt. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, sis. I just love talking about love. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of infectious, isn't it? In a good way. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Okay. Paragraph five. Right? Yes. Yep. Five. And it is this that waits to meet us at the journey's ending. Ooh. Every step we take brings us a little nearer. This review will shorten time immeasurably if we keep in mind that this remains our goal. 
and that as we practice, it is this which we are approaching. Interesting that it's all capitalized because he's pointing to oh. divine love, God. Is yours capitalized, the words this? No. no, that's been taken out of the FIP version. Tell me what is capitalized, sis. This review will shorten time immeasurably if we keep in mind that this, capital T, remains our goal and that as we practice it it is capital t this which capital w we are approaching wow that is that makes quite a difference <laughs> yeah. oh great wow yes. wow um it might be well worth looking at the preceding last couple of sentences there um so this self alone knows love. He's speaking about the shared holy self. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's it's. So this this this, per, this is the Father's love. Yes. This is the Christ within, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And it's this that waits to meet us at the journey's ending, and we're going to get lots of tastes of it. Yes as we embark upon, you know, uh, the holy relationship with others, which is, which is a major goal in the TTC, the Total Transformation Course Online, right, with our beautiful family. Yes. Yeah, Miracle Buddies, etc. Right. Yeah. That's where you get the direct experience. Yeah. Okay. Let us raise our hearts from dust to life as we remember this is promised us and that this course was sent to open up the path of light to us and teach us step by step how to return to the eternal self we thought we lost. And this is so beautiful. I, Jesus, I take the journey with you for I share your doubts and fears a little while that you may come to me who recognize the road by which all doubts and fears are overcome. We walk together. I must understand uncertainty and pain, although I know they have no meaning. For a savior must remain with those he teaches, seeing what they see, but still retaining in his mind the way which led him out and now will lead you out with him. God's son is crucified until you walk along, along the road with me. That's how great his need is of us. So he is, is with us all the way. All the way. Um, and this is not metaphor, this is the truth. To the degree that uh, we are willing to place our false humility and unworthiness aside, to that degree, he literally shows up for us. Yeah, he says that he was tempted in all ways that we are. Yes. So he's the mediator. He doesn't come in and speak over our heads or say, get over it. He can really meet us where we think we are in the midst of the pain and the doubts and, you know, tenderly walk with us, reminding us, showing us. He's the way shower, right? Yeah. You can feel it, sis. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, you can feel his presence right this moment. Yes. Yeah, it's. And the gratitude, immense gratitude he has for us, meaning you, our beautiful family, ASAP family. Yeah. Because we're all the lights that are going to help to lead others out of the darkness with these teachings. Yeah, I remember so many times of thinking, feeling like I was alone in these efforts. And it's like, are you kidding me? You know, he would not bring us this far along if we were not mightily supported. And our, you know, our function is so sacred that how could we fall? How could we fail? 
You know, our willingness assures that we'll have everything that we need along this road to complete our function. It feels good. It feels so comforting. <sighs> yes. Yeah. My resurrection comes again each time I lead a brother safely to the place at which the journey ends and is forgot. I am renewed each time a brother learns there is a way from misery and pain. I am reborn each time a brother's mind turns to the light in him and looks for me. I have forgotten. I have forgotten no one. Help me now to lead you back to where your journey was begun and make another choice with me. Release me as you practice once again the thoughts I brought to you from him who sees your bitter need and knows the answer God has given him. Together we review these thoughts. Together we devote our time and effort to them. And together we will teach them to our brothers. God would not have heaven incomplete. It waits for you, as I do. I am incomplete without your part in me. Can we stop this? I am incomplete without your part in me. Can we allow that to really sink in? Thank you. Thanks, sis. You know, if you love Jesus, and I know you guys do, I mean, you can really feel these words and what we offer him as we practice and go this road together and what it means for the entire world, his mission to be completed through us, his faith in us, his asking, what else is there to do? Oh boy, it's gonna be tough. I just dropped down my eyes to the next paragraph. I'm like, oh crap, let me, <laughs> let me. We sure do go through a lot of Kleenex, don't we, in these lessons? Let me just save you guys some time. The best ones is Puffs Plus Lotion. What is it? Puffs Plus Lotion. I've got the same ones. Uh, here they are. Look at these. Wow, this is a great ad for Puffs. <laughs> Look at this. Puffs Plus She looks lotion. just like you. Of course, I cried a lot more than sisters, so I've got more. <laughs> the, one, the one who has the most tissue wins. That's oh. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus is giggling with us. You know that? Oh, yes, thank you. He's so present. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Deep dive. I am incomplete without your part in me. And as I am made whole, 
we go together to our ancient home, prepared for us before time was and kept unchanged by time, immaculate and safe, as it will be at last when time is done. Let this review be then your gift to me. Glad. This... Gladly. I just said gladly. Glad. Sorry. Yes. Gladly. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Willingly. <laughs> hmm. For this alone I need. That you will hear the words I speak and give them to the world. You are my voice, my eyes, my feet, my hands, through which I save the world. The self from which I call to you is but your own. To him we go together. Take your brother's hand. For this is not a way we walk alone. In him I walk with you. And, oh man. Sorry, he gave me a prayer not that long ago. And it's like, there it is again. Mm -hmm. It's just, I, I in you and you in me and we in him. Take your brother's hand. For this is not a way we walk alone. In him I walk with you and you with me. There our, it is. Yeah. Our father wills his son be one with him. What lives but must not then be one with you? Let this review become a time in which we share a new experience for you yet one as old as time and older still. Hallowed your name. Your glory undefiled forever. and your wholeness now complete as God established it. You are his son, completing his extension in your own. We practice but an ancient truth we knew before illusion seemed to claim the world, and we remind the world that it is free of all illusion every time we say, God is but love, and therefore, so am I. With this, we start each day of our review. With this, we start and end each period of practice time. And with this thought, we sleep to waken once again with these same words upon our lips to greet another day. No thought that we review, but we surround with it and use the thoughts to hold it up before our minds and keep it clear in our remembrance throughout the day. And thus, when we have finished this review, we will have recognized the words we speak are true. Yet are the words but aids and to be used except at the beginning and the end of the practice periods, but to recall the mind as needed to its purpose. We place faith in the experience that comes from practice, not the means we use the words. We wait for the experience and recognize that it is only here conviction lies. We use the words and try and try again to go beyond them to their meaning, which is far beyond their sound. The sound grows dim and disappears as we approach the source of meaning. It is here that we find rest. God is but love, and therefore, so am I. 
So God is but love. Another way of saying that is God is only love. <clears throat> Therefore, I am only love. Yes. We were made by God love in its image and likeness. Love's image and likeness. Not the love that the world knows, but a divine, perfect, changeless love. That's what we are. You can feel into, how can I be a body if divine love is what I am? How can I be limited? How can I be weak? How can I be separate when love by its very nature requires all to share in it? So that's right, sis. So like feeling into this, how could I be in conflict? Mm. Um, how could I be deprived? Mm. Not possible. And to know that that I that is love is the I of our shared holy self. So it cannot be true about one and not be true of another. Love only looks on itself everywhere in everything. Which takes us into this first idea in lesson 171. <laughs> Good segue. You want to read that one, sis? <sighs> Lesson 171, God is but love, and therefore so am I, right? Oh, yes, that's what it says. And this is a review of Lesson 151 as well. All things are echoes of the voice for God. All things are echoes of the voice for God. Um, and uh, God is but love, and therefore so am I. Just got a couple of little things to remind us here what this one's about. Mm -hmm. All things are echoes for the voice for God. Um, recognize that everything, this is the key, this is, this is, from my own experience is, is that we can't really know that all things are echoes of the voice for God until we recognize everything that is not love is really fear, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like that's that positive separation again. So everything that is not love is really fear and therefore it's not of God. We have to, we have to, we have to make that positive separation because Holy Spirit can't do that for us because we have so-called free will. Mm -hmm. But we do need to make that positive separation. We need to say, hey, whatever it is, whatever conflict there seems to be, whatever the body is displaying, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, is this love? If it's not, then it's fear. Mm -hmm. And if it's fear, it's not of God. We have to make that positive separation. So remembering that everything, everything that we, everything that we do here in the world, everything that we seem to react to, it's either an outright expression of love mm -hmm or it's a call for love. Right. 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 It, it, you know, there's, again, it's either, it's, it's either one or the other. It's not, there's no gray area in between. Yeah. We have to build that spiritual muscle, that vigilance. And I'm going to use that word that the ego can't stand is that discipline mm -hmm. necessary to make positive separation between love and fear because the ego is hopelessly confused when it comes to love and fear the only love it knows is fear a fearful love yeah. and a loving fear 
that's it. That's all it knows. Right. right. And fear is always going to look upon, uh, look through the ego filter and what it deems it sees and feels and touches and smells, uh, perceives is always going to be a distortion. Yeah. And so it's, this is the practice. It's like when you're seeing something that's not of love, like sis said, there's two, it's either an expression of love or a call for it. So if you're viewing something that's not loving, there's the call for love. And in that moment, if you're seeing something imperfect, right, you're seeing it through an ego filter yet right there, right then is the opportunity to want to see beyond what, you're perceiving and wanting the miracle instead. So God is right there. God's doing something right there. But for the way that you're identifying yourself as mythical me, you're seeing a distorted view, your perception, your it's, it's mesmerism. It's a hip, it's hypnotic, but it's not true because it's not of God. So there's a way Nothing out there is going to change from bad to good. The correction occurs when you identify yourself correctly. Who is the one that's looking? The ego looks on distortions. The holy self looks with the light of God in your mind. When you side with the light of God in your mind, don't be surprised when what seems so real, so immovable, changes in an instant. Mm -hmm. That has occurred with me. I know that what I was looking at did not actually change. I recognize it's something that can go from not good, sick, something bad looking to instantaneous health. It wasn't because something real out there changed. It's because I changed the operating system from whence I was looking. That's the correction. So everything is an echo, right? All things are echoes of the voice of God. God spoke and it was done. And it was done perfectly according to love's design. That's all there ever is for us to truly experience. And if we're not, that's the distorted view of the ego. Change who you are identifying with. That's the correction. Never out there. It's in our mind. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, sis. Beautiful explanation. I think, you know, we have to, first of all, recognize, make that positive separation because there's some pragmatic steps, right? Yes. We make that positive separation. And then, of course, we have to will with God, in other words, willing with Holy Spirit, yes. to want to see the miracle behind the upsetting appearance, right. whatever it may be, yes. which is not of God, mm -hmm. right? Now, once we, want that, once we do that, we're actually giving Holy Spirit permission to join us. Mm -hmm. We're seeing with light. Yes. So we're open to the miracle then. That's right. It's, it's, so, but in that too is another part, which I believe, and I practice it all the time mm -hmm. as much as possible, mm -hmm. um, and that is setting the goal in advance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. We won't recognize that all things are echoes for the voice of God unless we set the goal consistently in advance. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd like to share this with you just as a refresher. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> this is from A Course in Miracles, Chapter 17, Section 6. The value of deciding in advance what you want to happen is simply that you will perceive the situation as shitty as it might be. As he doesn't say that part. I was going to say, I don't know. Sorry. Remember. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Forgive me. Forgive me, but I'm just being practical here. That okay. The value of deciding it in advance what you want to happen. We want to see a reflection of God's truth behind the adversity that the ego is perceiving. Value right. of deciding in advance what you want to happen is simply that you will perceive the situation as a means to make it happen, mm -hmm. to make it happen, right? 
you will therefore make every effort to overlook what interferes with the accomplishment of your objective mm -hmm. and concentrate on everything that helps you meet it. Yes. yes. It is quite noticeable that this approach has brought you closer to the Holy Spirit's sorting out of truth and falsity. The true becomes what can be used to meet the goal. The false becomes the useless from this point of view. The situation now has meaning, but only because the goal has made it meaningful. You know, that's what consistent forgiveness mm -hmm. is. We, we recognise the goal immediately. The goal is always peace. I want the peace of God. I want the reflection of the truth of what's really happening behind this ego appearance. Right. And so I, I'm setting the goal in advance is that if I'm triggered, I want to forgive this appearance right. and see the truth behind it. And why do we stay motivated? What is it that makes us, you know, really bite down? Like, I want to do this. I really want to do this. And I'm going to, that's a rhetorical question because I'm going to answer it now. But it was when I stopped having selfish interests and the love that I experienced transcended this idea of Kareem, recognizing that my brother's awakening is mine. And when we experience love, that's the memory of the father where we go back online with God. And when you love God, you know, loving his son, because he loves his son, he loves creation. God's will is that we're in communion with him, that life and creation is this dance of love. You want to give that back instead of defending it. You know, here God is with this beautiful gift. And I don't want the gift. I want this little token instead, right? There's my defense against a benevolent, loving, perfect God to say, I want my creation, my making instead. But when you start feeling the love of God, you just, what was I doing? What am I thinking? You know, and you just want, I will restore the father's kingdom by being his extension right here, knowing what he's knowing, seeing how he's seeing his creation, right? Looking at the face of Christ for God, here is your son. Behold your son in whom you are well pleased. Look at him through me. Look at the love that he is with me. That's, that's restoring God. And you'll want that. And you'll want to practice. And if you ever forget, come back to this review. Mm -hmm. You know, his, our resurrection happens. His resurrection happens every time our mind lights up with the truth. Yeah. Love is the motivator. Divine love which is, has nothing to do with personal interest. Zero. Really, really learning that. Yes. Yeah, I'm not a body. Free. I am free. I am as God created me. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you want to read the second one, sis? Uh, from one uh, is there a second one? Yeah. We did this last oh, time too. Uh, two ideas. We did this last time. It's like deja vu, isn't it? Oh, okay. The second one is God is but love and therefore so am I. Is that right? Nope. No? I've missed one? It's the next one. It's from lesson 152. Do you see it there? Under lesson 171, there's two independent ideas. Well, two ideas there. Oh, that's great. I've gone and put them in two separate places. <laughs> Ah, oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you for pointing that out. Sure. Okay. So it is the power of decision is my own, which is a review of the lesson that we did 152. Yes. Um, and I, I'd just like to share this, this with you as a reminder. And again, we're probably going to re be repeating this a few times during the lessons because mm -hmm. It has to be seen. It's something I didn't see for the first decade. I didn't want to see it for the at least the first decade of studying A Course in Miracles. And that is perception's fundamental law, right? Because the power of decision is my own. What does that mean? Jesus says here, he says, you see what you believe is there. You see 
what you believe is there. And you believe it there because you want it there. Perception has no other law than this. You know, just stop there because I'm looking at the whole idea, um, you know, Right now, the challenge here is that I really thought I was making headway into mm, knowing that I'm not a body. And then hitting that mid-60s in the illusion, a body being 65 years old, then it, it, it kind of uh, was very uh, convincing. The ego, appearances, very convincing. Oh, well, and I, I know I've talked about this before, um, that even though I am a child of God, a beloved child of God, that I could be, uh, what's the word for it? What's aging? Decomposing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Decaying? Mm -hmm. Rotting. Rotting. I like that. <laughs> Slowly rotting. rotting away love you know love this is what the ego wants yes. us to believe yes and, and that is that love does end up uh in death right that yeah. we that that love has an end mm -hmm. yeah life ends in death but the truth is that love and life are one there is no death we've already talked about that haven't we yeah How can we sit here and say god is but love and he requires his son to rot and die but god <laughs> is but love god is but love and we rot and die yeah well uh yeah okay uh but you know we can learn these metaphysical principles and laws mm -hmm. till the end of time mm -hmm. but it's not until we gain the conviction mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I'm under no laws but God's. It's not until then that we can look past the appearances mm -hmm. uh, that, that the ego tries to throw at us mm -hmm. and then really, really um, gain dominion, mm -hmm. okay, over the laws of the ego mm -hmm. because we're synchronised. I mean, we're aligned completely with God's laws. Well, so I'm learning this and I'm kind of teaching it, right, at the same time. That's the best way to learn it is to teach it, yeah. Um, getting back to the point that I was trying to make here uh, is that it, it's Jesus says here that you see what you believe is there. So I'm seeing the idea of ageing body and ageing body. And you believe it there because you want it there. Now, that part the ego hates. <laughs> I want aging. Mm -hmm. Okay? I want it there. I want it there. But I have to ask myself the question, why the hell would I want it? Why the hell would I want to see a rotting body? Why? Because whatever mythical me is left of nook, wants to prove the separation is real. And that's not me. No. No. And and um, I would go as far as, you know, Sis and I are in holy relationship. And um, it's almost like blasphemous maybe, but when she talks about age or aging or even being sick or if she tried to tell me that she had some life-threatening problem, um, my only response now, and I'm kind of surprised. Would you have sympathy, sis? I, I giggle. I laugh. <laughs> Blasphemy. It, it is. And I'm sitting here and I'm looking into the face of a woman I just am so in love with. And she's the most beautiful woman I've ever met inside and out. And so when she sits there and talks about these things, I just, I'm sitting here laughing on the inside. And I know that she, you know, it gets tempted to take it seriously, but Sis, my sense of the whole thing is that, you know, you have completely forgiven it. But look at that first sentence. He says, you see the contents of belief. So there's no out outside world. We're only ever looking at our 
projected beliefs. Mm -hmm. And right now, sis, you have really, we have signed up to take on the collective's most treasured beliefs. Mm -hmm. And we are wringing those beliefs out, uncovering every nook and cranny associated with those to be looked at and overcome through forgiveness and accepting the atonement. So, you know, it's, it's big in the world, this thing about aging and death being natural and inevitable. And so it's with utmost reverence and patience without any self judgment to know that we've really raised our hands up to say, we are here as a voice in the wilderness crying, there is no death. <sighs> so we're going to take you down off the cross. <laughs> <We're> just... <laughs> oh, sis. Thank yeah. you. A lot of emotion when I said that, but. Um... Thank you. Thank you. Step well, I can step. feel it. Yeah. Step by step. Yeah. Step by step. Yep. Jesus is holding our hand. All of our hands. All yeah. Of our hands. You guys are here doing this because you were called to these teachings. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, yeah, you know, getting back to the lesson. <laughs> The power of decision is my own. Yes. You know, when we 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 have to go there, we we just like I'm going there and sis is going there. Um, we have we have to go there if if it's something, if there's some kind of adversity and we're really triggered by it, um, we have to see, we have to acknowledge first without any self judgment without the self-judgment because that comes from guilt as well we have to see that we wanted it there that's the only way we could be triggered by it we yeah. couldn't be triggered otherwise yes. right whatever it might be mm -hmm. problems in a relationship mm -hmm. ill health physical pain aging um financial issues whatever we wanted it there we wanted it there why to prove that we're separate that's the ego to prove, yeah. yeah, that we're mythical me. That we're mythical me. Mm -hmm. And it's just in seeing that mm -hmm. we have to we have to go, okay, so I must have wanted it mm -hmm. unconsciously. Mm -hmm. I and now the power of decision is my own. I choose with Holy Spirit. That's it. I choose with Holy Spirit in this moment. But we can't choose with Holy Spirit if we're not willing to, to be accountable mm -hmm. first. Yeah. Or having sided with the illusory ego to want the particular um, and, and this manifestation. This right. really bears repeating because e ego inevitably comes in and hijacks it. It says, okay, you wanted it. And then it just lays this heavy guilt on you. And then we kind of slump over and go, oh man, we never get past that. And I said, Jesus, what's helpful here? And it was like, don't even pick up judgment. This is the this is the move of empowerment. You thought that you were a victim of something that you were seeing outside of yourself. When the gift comes, and it is a gift to recognize that there is no world out there. It's all arising in my mind. What you're seeing is what you believe. My beliefs are being projected out there. But when I'm willing to say there is no out there, the cause is still in my mind. Now, before you could never do anything about it. You were shifting chairs around on the deck of the Titanic. Whatever you do out there at the level of phenomena and magic will never ever work, maybe temporarily, but the cause isn't healed. So bringing it into the level back to your mind, saying that's where it's arising, hot dog, that's where the solution is, Holy Spirit's in my mind. So I'm, this is the move of empowerment. This is taking back your dominion as the Christ, saying this problem only exists as a belief in my mind. It's not out there. Holy Spirit, look upon this belief that I'm projecting in my mind. I'm forgiving it. It isn't true because it's not of God who is but love. Take this from me and heal my perception. Bring my mind back to wholeness. In other words, what is God knowing? What's the miracle? What's the truth underlying the false belief? 
There can't be a false belief unless there was the first truth that God said, this is it, perfection. And the ego goes, well, how about imperfection, right? There's the belief that we're projecting. We can bring that right back into our mind and have Holy Spirit correct it. There is no imperfection in God. And when you know this, when your mind is healed with the the light of Holy Spirit, the voice for God, the only power there is, you're going to be projecting only the peaceful, perfect images in a happy dream until God takes the last step. There is nothing bad or negative or uh, or, um, no guilt producing when we take ownership because you're bringing it to the source of the solution. Okay. Don't let me hijack you and go, why did you do that? You haven't done anything. It's a belief, a false one. That's it. Like you said before, it's not about right or wrong, or sorry, good or bad, right? It's about we take it to go, is this real or or unreal? Mm -hmm. Yes. There's no guilt. Right. No self-attack. Yeah. You never did anything that you thought. Never did occur. So all you're doing is I'm electing to get online with God because why? God is but love and so therefore am I. So am I. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Can't say that often enough. Apparently. God is but love and therefore so am I. I'll get it. Yeah. Got it. Beautiful. Okay. So you're not no more uh, self whipping. That's the ego right there. Truck loads of guilt. All right. (laughs) So that's lesson 171. Thank you. That was a long lesson. That was, you guys are so patient. (laughs) They're like, oh, it's a review. This will just snap right through. You guys know us better than that by now. (laughs) Yeah. Thanks, sis. Thank you, sis. Thank you, beautiful family. See you tomorrow morning. By the way, I don't know when this is going to air exactly, but I'm starting the text. We're going through the the text. Um, Okay. That that's a reminder, okay? Is July first, twenty twenty one? Is it no J- July first or third or something? Anyway, mm-hmm. it's it's in the <laughs> it's in the description box below. Yeah. Show more box. You'll see it there. It's the study. It's a uh, ASIM deep dive into the text. Yeah. That's what we're calling it. I'm hoping you'll join me. It'll be fine. It'll be every Thursday night for however long and. Um... Five years, guys. (laughs) Minimum of five years. You're going to see me on my good days and bad days with makeup, without makeup, in my pajamas. (laughs) Hot water bottles. Hot water bottles. And going in the background. Puffs Plus. Come come join me. Let's hang out. I'm already in love with you guys. I hope that you'll just continue the journey. I mean, we're doing this together too. We'll be together for a while, but why not at a Thursday night? I mean, honestly, there's nothing else to do, right? And there are going to be some incredible miracles in that class. Oh yeah. I'm insisting on it. (laughs) It's all by donation, right? What did you say? I said, I'm insisting on it. (laughs) It's going to be a miraculous journey. Yes. Okay. I might just drop in here and there. Oh, you better. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Well, you'll have the third volume wrapped up by then. You'll come and jump in every every Thursday, right? Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Love you all. Bye. See you next time. Bye. Bye.